Hey everyone, it's Wes, Obsidian Blade Podcast, and I am excited to spend some time with you, whatever time of day it is right now, uh, to go over how to really take your Instagram postings to the next level as conscious media creators. But before we get into that, I just want to give big ups to Giselle for organizing the Conscious Media Festival and everyone who helped make that come together, and as well as to everybody, our new family of everyone who came together for that event. It was truly amazing. It's it's inspired me in so many ways, and so I would just like to be able to create this video for you and to give back to the community that we're creating right now. And so who is this video for? Well, this is definitely for, you know, people who want to rock their Instagram a little bit better. It's definitely not for someone who's starting out and who needs to learn how to set up their account. So I would definitely say go Google or YouTube how to set up your Instagram account. And on the other end of the spectrum, if you've got thousands of followers, you know, and you know what you're doing, then what I'm going to be talking about is more in the beginner to intermediate realm. And what we're going to cover, and I'm actually going to do a post as we we go through this so you can see me and how I actually do my own posts. Um, what we're going to cover is learning about keywords and or hashtags and how important those are to your posts as well as how to you know edit your texts so that you can have not only a great image go along or be a part of your post but to add text to your posting so that it is serving as like a mini blog so to dive in we want to take a look at how to think about searching for your keywords. So let's transition over here to my account. And what I recommend, let me just jump back and say this. What I recommend is that when you are creating your Instagram, you know, brand that you research anywhere from a minimum of 30 to maybe around 120 hashtags that are relevant to the communications and the audience that you want to attract and engage with. So what I notice a lot of times with people's hashtag game <laughs> is that it can be extremely off. Uh, Per post, you are allowed up to 30 hashtags. So I would highly recommend, number one, that you utilize that opportunity to show up in that amount of you know searches. So 30 hashtags per post. But also the game that you really want to nail is choosing the most relevant hashtags. Think of hashtags as the GPS or phone number to finding content within Instagram. And so if your GPS is off, no one's going to find you. And if you're serious about your Instagram game, you know, you're going to be spending multiple hours a day and or week doing this. So choosing the right hashtags is going to work in your favor. And yes, it's a little bit of time investigating and discovering what those minimum 30 to 120, maybe even more hashtags that are relative to you. But that work is going to pay off again, because it's about you showing up where people are looking. And if you're just beginning, it is important to show up and in as many places as possible. So I will say that, <laughs> and then, you know, choosing hashtags that are really in the zone. So, you know, just like planet earth is in a zone, it's called the Goldilocks zone. It's not too hot and it's not too cold for life to flourish. So too do your hashtags need to play a game where they're not too general. And I'll show you some examples of what that looks like in a second. And then you don't want to choose ones that are too specific. So what is general? General is like, let's take a word, you know, say you're taking a photo and it has flowers in it. And then you decide one of your hashtags is going to have the hashtag flower. Pretty 
general, right? Pretty average sort of hashtag. And when we look at that example, you'll see that there's millions of people who have used the word, you know, or the hashtag flower. And it's not really specific. And then the opposite end of the spectrum, if you go too specific, say by choosing a keyword that doesn't have a lot of postings and or you've invented your own hashtag and invented a lot of just silly ones that no one is checking out, well, then that's that's even worse because you've destroyed any sort of chance of someone discovering you or you've wasted one of your 30 hashtags per post that would give you an opportunity of discovery. So how you're going to find your hashtags that are relevant is by going to your Instagram account and you'll see there on the bottom, there is a magnifying glass or a search icon, right? We're going to tap on that. And then up at the top there, there's the word search. We tap in that field and then we're going to type in something like, let's just look at that example I was saying, flowers, right? flower, and then we'll tap on the word tags, and then we'll see all the possibilities that come up around flower, right? They're going to give you flowers, and then anything that's relative. And then you see below that the number of people previous to this point who have posted with that hashtag, right? So like I was saying, flower or flowers has 79 million posts. Okay. So that's really, really general. And why we want to avoid general is because that's more competition for eyeballs, right? You're one post amongst 79 million. Chances are, unless you have a really viral image, you know, and or a copy, it's not going to catch. You're going to get lost in the noise. So part of our game here is to choose hashtags that are popular enough, but not too popular, and also speak directly to the audience that we wish to engage with. So just because, say, that there's the word flower in, or if there's a flower in your image, doesn't mean you need to hashtag the word flower or flowers. You want to think, like your audience. What is your core audience looking for? So I'm going to say a typical example here is like, let's click on metaphysics, right? Or you can type in the search for metaphysics, right? So this is interesting to note. Take a look at what happens when you do search and you type in a particular hashtag. So we're looking at metaphysics and what you see up here at the top is what's the top nine or the top posts. These are the most recent posts that are also the most popular. They're not in any sort of linear time order. They're just popularity and, and most recent. And then below, you'll start seeing in linear order, what is the most recent post with that hashtag? Now we can see a couple of different things here. One, where it says most recent below the top nine, we can see that there are 197,000 posts that have used this hashtag to date. Cool. Now that's what I'm going to call a Goldilocks zone. For myself, I kind of create a, a zone where I'm saying, okay, the hashtags I use need to be anywhere from, you know, a minimum of 25,000 previous posts to maybe up to a million. That's my zone that I've created for myself of like, hey, I know if I make a post and I use that particular hashtag or hashtags, it's going to show up or it's going to have a greater chance to show up in an arena where there's popularity, but not too much competition and speaking to my audience. I hope that makes sense. So jumping back, I'll say, hey, metaphysics, that's a great one. It's speaking to my audience. It's got 197,000, you know, previous posts, which means there's interest and it's not too competitive. The coolest thing about also doing the search, and again, we're going to take that and I would suggest using a service like Evernote uh, to start creating a list of your most popular hashtags that you're going to use from. Remember, you can use 30 per post, but I do research 
of around 100, 120. So that way I can pick and pull per post what are the most relative hashtags that are should be associated with the image I'm using. And then that can change up per post. So the cool thing in your hashtag quest is now also at the top, you're gonna see this thing called related. Look where I'm, the screen is moving. So where it says related, now it's gonna show me other things that are related to the hashtag metaphysics. So we've got metaphysical, clairvoyant, spirit realm, as above, so below, and divination. So I'm gonna click on clairvoyant. And so now you can see the top po posts, top nine posts in clairvoyant as well as in most recent, it says, oh, hey, there's 128,000 people. Well, that falls into my Goldilocks zone of, hey, there's popularity, but not too much competition for this hashtag. And this is great. So again, you can keep going through the related suggestions at the top and make a collection, but also think about what are the most relative hashtags for my audience. So we look at Ascended Masters, right? And again, it's giving us more suggestions. You can keep going and going and going. So Ascended Masters has 37,000 posts. Cool, that's above my minimum of 25,000. And it's relative to the people that I want to connect with. So again, you know, go through your, go hunting for your hashtags. And that is the best way to do it. Also, when you look at other people's posts that you admire, that are in the genre of you know the audience that you wanna to speak to, take a look at what they are posting as well. Um, because there's very esoteric ones. Um, you know, like one of the hashtags I use is meditate every damn day. I wouldn't have thought of that myself but through the process of looking at other people's posts, discovering in that search feature, uh, I came across the most weirdest stuff. You know, I'm like, okay, meditate every damn day. I'm using it because it's popular enough. It's in my Goldilocks zone. Um, so what I want to counsel against, and I see this a lot, I see people doing a couple of mistakes when it comes to hashtags. One, not utilizing all 30 hashtags that you can use per post. So they say someone only puts 10 or five. It's a wasted opportunity. Another big mistake, again, is putting in general hashtags that like flowers. It's so general, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, and there's way too much competition for it. You got to niche down. And the third mistake, and I'll caution against this, is that when people invent their own hashtags to the point where every, and they use say 30 invented hashtags, while that's very creative and cool, um, no one's looking for them. You've got to go where the eyeballs already exist. Now, that being said, over time, you can invent your own hashtag one that's relative to the conversation that you're creating and or your brand. So that's maybe one to three invented hashtags that as you gain popularity, that makes sense. So there's certain brands out there that have their own hashtags, like Collective Evolution. That's a hashtag. So we know them. They're a great website. Um, so the, And they're very popular. So it makes sense that they have their own hashtag. You can coin your own hashtag from the get-go. I'm not saying don't do that, but realize it won't be popular until you are popular, until you've gained enough traction and other people start using it in their posts to be included in your conversation. So just bear that in mind. So I know some people can get pretty funny with hashtags and use hashtags as a joke, but I'm not joking. You're wasting an opportunity when you invent way too many of them. Again, use the search function of Instagram to discover where the conversations are and where you can actually enter into the stream and be seen. So again, for me, that Goldilocks zone is 25,000 previous posts to around a million. And don't shy away from, you know, hashtags that are a million, three million in popularity. 
Who knows? Your stuff might be good enough to just be rising to the top and you're riding that wave. I'm not saying don't do it, but test. That's the key thing with every one of these things that you do. Every time you're posting, you're testing which hashtags get you the most exposure and engagement, which is another big thing that we want to talk about. So one of the things I want to say before we jump into posting a real live post and showing you how to create engagement is that each one of us as conscious media creators needs to do an, a personal inventory. I know as people who are, you know, ex, you know, exposing their truth or, you know, widening and decalcifying their third eye or feeling the different realms of existence, this mundane or hands-on 3D stuff can be overwhelming. I can understand and appreciate how it interrupts your beingness. So a key thing that every artist or practitioner needs to ask themselves is, do they have the skill set or time to be this technical? And if not, then it is important for you to find a business partner or collaborator who does love to do this and can do this for you, can take your big ideas and translate them. And just that's just something to do, do an inventory about because if this is overwhelming to you and too mental, then appreciate your limitations. Don't hurt yourself, right? Don't berate yourself uh, because this is not where your jam is. And maybe this is important. This is an Aquarian age thing to do. We do need to operate as collectives. We do need to come together as teams where we can support each other. So that's another thing that I want to really put out there as conscious media creators. Know your limits and know your strengths and collaborate where you need to. Cool. So what I have is I've got a post ready to go. And so... I just want to show you also how I do my postings and how I create copy for that. So let's jump in as I think about this. So what I like to do, and that's just my screensaver. So what I like to do is Instagram allows you a minimum of 25, no, 2200 characters that include spaces to write copy. And so recently, I've been treating my posts as mini blog posts, um, as well as creating a really awesome image that stops people's eyeballs and keeps them there, or at least, you know, stops them scrolling in the feed and, you know, engages what I'm offering. So one of the cool things is that, again, you can write all this content. It's 2,200 characters in length. I suggest if you do that, do not write out your content within Instagram. Use an app like Evernote or here I'm on my uh, iPhone, I'm using the app for notes, right? Now there's a reason why I use notes. One, if you're writing a lot of content on Instagram and you press the wrong button, you could lose all your, your writing. So using an app will not do that. You'll have your content it's not going away. Um, the second thing about putting your content in, at least on the iPhone, in notes, and you can also Google Google this, and I'll tell you what I'm t- saying to Google, is that what you want to do to make long format content readable in Instagram is to offer up a lot of line breaks. When things, and I'll just show you the example, you see when everything is like a big chunky paragraph, that's hard to read on a cell phone. And again, on Instagram, pretty much 99 to 100% of your audience is going to be reading and looking at your content on a cell phone. So when you write something long, it's important to create a lot of line breaks. So each sentence is very digestible and visually edible. Okay, there's a reason why we have line breaks so that we can, you know, eat things up. It's like when you sit down to a meal, you don't just throw the whole plate of food into your mouth. You eat one bite at a time. You savor it. You understand it. You contextualize it. Okay. (laughs) I can go off and talk for hours about all this. So we're looking at this paragraph. What we're wanting to do is you'll notice I have all my paragraphs set up. 
but there's a weird esoteric thing that you have to do in notes in order to maintain these line breaks that you want to make your content digestible. So what I do is I place my cursor at the beginning of a paragraph and then I hit the back button twice until there's no space between the period of the last sentence and the first character of the next sentence. Okay, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit return once and then you're gonna hit the numbers button so you can hit a period and then you're gonna hit return again. What that does, it maintains the line breaks. So when you paste this into your Instagram post, it's gonna look exactly the way you created it, rather than erasing these line breaks. But the key point is, again, I go to the beginning of the sentence, I hit backspace twice, so that there's no space between the period and the first character of the next sentence, then I hit return once, then I have to hit period, and then return again. Because Instagram doesn't recognize kind of empty, you know, paragraph areas. So that little period that I place in between the paragraphs helps keep that space active. And then what I'm gonna do is just continue through paragraph after paragraph, doing return, oops, sorry, return once, number, and then return again. And yes, I can understand that it's a little tedious and esoteric, but this is what you do <laughs> when you want to win the game. <laughs> and keep on going here through all these paragraphs. Boom. You can see what I'm doing. Again, I like to write. So I, in this post, I definitely maximize. I came close to the 2200 characters that you can use for this post because I love going deep. And almost done. Boom, boom. One of the things that they also say is that if you end a paragraph with an emoji, it may not recognize your paragraph break that we're trying to enforce here. So again, don't end any paragraphs or sentences with an emoji after the period, because I believe, as they have said, um, it doesn't allow, it doesn't enforce the line break that you're doing here. Okay, almost, almost there. Boy, oh boy, do I like to write. Words are so powerful and awesome. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Okay. And then I'm, I'm actually going to probably break my own rule here and add a couple of emojis. Um, I like, where are you? There we are. Oh, we're going to do the sword and heart because that's my emoji set that I dig. Okay. Boom. The other thing that you're going to notice is that for my list of 120 hashtags, I also copied and pasted them from Evernote where I keep them and I posted them in here. So I have a quick way to, uh, get at them when I do my post and I'll show you when and where I post my hashtags and it's not in the initial post. And there's a reason for that as we do this. Um, again, you will see that I've also added five, uh, periods and paragraph breaks before my hashtags. This is not always necessary, but there's a reason for that as well. And I'll show you that in a second. So good. So we've got all our copy. And what I'm going to do is then copy it all, copy the copy. And let's hopefully this makes, goes easy. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. And then we hit copy. And now I'm going to go back to Instagram and here's where it gets fun. We are going to do a real time posting together. And just before I do that, let's just say this. Uh, a lot of people have questions of like, when's the right time to post and how often do you post? I think first of all, you make your brand work for you. For me right now, I'm actually, and I want to do it more. I'm only posting about once a week, kind of ridiculous. 
The truth is the more you post, of course, the more engagement you're going to create. I recognize that I'm leaving people pretty hungry and I'm going to switch that up. I need to be posting more often uh, because I want to. I love Instagram. I think it's one of the best platforms out there right now for engagement. Um, But the other question is, you know, people say, how often do you post? Well, if you're posting multiple posts per day, it is suggested that you space it out a minimum of three hours in between each post. If you hit up people with three posts in like the same minute, the way the algorithm works on Instagram, not everybody's going to see all three of those posts. And if they do, it's kind of spammy looking. So I would say pace your posts. You are trying, you're trying to value your time that you're putting into these posts. At least for me, I create very high end posts. So I am, I spend hours doing from the graphics to the writing to the thinking of when and how this post is going to go out. That may not be your jam. It is for me. I'm very meticulous. But again, if you're going to do three posts a day and three posts is, is super generous. That's a lot of content, you know, space them out with a minimum of three hours in between time of day to post is again, something that you want to test. I've had success posting early in the morning around lunchtime, and especially later in the evening. Now, why is that? You have to think about when the majority of people, and let's just say not just humans in general, but perhaps the majority of people in your demographic, when do they get on? If a lot of people in your demographic are going to a nine to five job, they're supposed to be working. And so they're not checking Instagram. When are they going to check Instagram? In the morning when they wake up, perhaps on their commute, if they're on a train or a bus, on their breaks, lunch breaks, and after work, typically in the evening. So think about that. Test, but test. And that's the thing that you do as a brand. You test, test, and test, and analyze the data of what's working and what's not, and you continue to refine. So just bear that in mind. So right now it's about 12.38 p.m. West Coast time. This is kind of a cool time. I've had success posting around here. People are on lunch, so we're going to go for it. So clicking the add image button, here is the picture that I created in Photoshop. I don't really need to do too much to it because I've decided what I want it to look like. And boom, hitting next. Now we're going to hit where it says caption. We're going to hit paste and we're pasting in all that content that I already created in notes. Boom, boom, boom. Making sure it's all in there. I know it's a tiny screen to be checking your thing, but there it is. So there's my content. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to tag people. So this is an important feature. So there's my artwork. I just tap on it once where I want the tag to go. And now a list of people show up that I can include. So I'm going to tag Conscious Media Festival. And then you can drag that around if, it, if you want it to not interfere with your photo. It doesn't show up until people tap on the photo. So I'm not too worried about where these show up. I'll tap the photo again. And then I want to add my buddy Universe Within. because She's rad. I'm going to add and search for Giselle Coy, because she's really cool. I'm going to add her. I dig, who else do I dig? These are all, and you know, choose the people, you know, choose your friends, but also choose the brands that you want to show up on their radar. That's a really important reason why we're tagging people in this photo. It's a great way to get on people that you want to interact, getting on their radar to hopefully, you know, create more community, to create more connection. Um, so I'm going to add Sadie Nardini cause she's a cool ass yoga chick. She's badass. Uh, let's see. We're going to, who else are we love adding? Okay. You can see I've added about 10 people here on the tagging of the photo. Again, kind of like hashtags. It's a way to be found. I think Forget the number of people. It may be around 20 to 30 people you can tag in there. You might want to Google the limit. 
but that's pretty cool. I've got 10 people here that I really dig interacting with and or I want to show up on their radar. And so then we'll hit done. So boom. So again, we've got a copy pasted in. We've tagged 10 people. Uh, adding location is another feature on here. And that can be very cool if you want to be associated with a certain region. And so that when people search for this certain area, you show up in the feed, kind of like hashtags, you show up in a location search. Depending on your brand and what you're doing, if you're, say, like a massage therapist in Sedona, Arizona, then yeah, tagging your posts with geolocation makes a lot of sense. For me, not so much right now, but um, again, I think if you're a business, a local business, doing geolocation is very, very important. Um, one of the other things that you want to do, and again, you we can do this later or you need to search this, is also linking in any other social media accounts. I don't like linking up my Twitter or anything else, but I do link it to my Facebook business page. And I'll turn that on so that when we hit share, it's automatically going to share on my Facebook business page. When to do this, when to not do this. Uh, it's... Again, like forwarding this to Twitter, it's a different media and medium and different conversation on Twitter. So I don't, it's not always a one size fits all solution is best. So I like just posting it to the Facebook because Facebook actually owns Instagram. So there's a lot of good integration there. The way you post it on Instagram is the way it's going to show up on your Facebook page. It's, it's the same. There's going to be no uh, discrepancy there. So I'm just going to keep that. That's just all I'm going to say about that for right now. So anyway, we've got our text in, we've got our photo, you know, selected, we've tagged 10 people, you can add a location or not. And then I say, link it to your Facebook business page that so automatically shows up there. And then the magic moment, we're going to hit share. And it's posting. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Da, 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 come on, post, post. Boom, there it is. Okay. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, because I like to write, I'm going to double check, I'm going to click the more button, that my text looks exactly the way I edited in notes. And look, there's all my line breaks. Done. Solid. Now, what we're going to do is, hey, what about those 30 hashtags I told you about that you can utilize? Where is it? Well, what you can do, and it still works, is you hit that little comment button, boom, and the first, you're gonna be the first person because you're writing your post right now. You're gonna be on here and you're gonna paste in your hashtags. So we jump back over to notes. Boom, 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 there's our original copy. Here's our 30 hashtags that I already got lined up. I'm gonna make sure that these five dots, and I'll tell you what these five dots are, in a second, so I'm going to hit return, hoping, boom, 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 that all those returns are in. Again, you have to just double check that you're forcing these returns, these line breaks, back, return, and one more, boom, boom. And then we're going to copy, so double tap, come on you, boom, okay. So I've got those five dots with line breaks and my 30 hashtags. Hit copy. Hopping back over, going to the first comment or that comment section below, tapping and hitting paste. There it is. And then I'm going to hit post. Boom. Now you can see why we added those line breaks, those five dots. When we go back to this and we scroll down, you can see that the Obsidian Blade podcast added a comment, but there's just this brackets with those three dots. So it kind of makes my post of my comments invisible in a certain way. That way, the next person who creates a comment, uh, you're going to just see their words. It's just a little bit of a stylistic thing. It's totally not necessary. The most important part that I'm saying about this is that when we hit comments, that you, here's your post, and then you put your hashtags in the first comment area. It totally works. Because now, like we'll tap on Ascended Masters, that last hashtag, 
and boom, you can see my post showed up underneath the search for hashtag Ascended Masters. If we go back to my post, we look at the comments, I'll choose uh, another hashtag, like hashtag enlightenment, tap on that. Boom, you can see my post is there in the feed. Now look at this. Hashtag enlightenment has 1,600,000 previous posts. See how my post, we just posted it, but it's already the fifth one down in the most recent. That's important to know. Again, hashtags with more popularity, there's more competition. So if I go back and we click on Ascended Masters, right, I'm the first post there because there's only 37,000 people who previously posted. So again, you know, play with it, see which hashtags make sense for you to use for your brand and ones that are, have enough traction, enough audience, but not too much competition that you just get buried. Okay, hope that hope that makes a lot of sense. So another key thing that I want to say about you know your post is that the way Instagram works, it has an algorithm, right? And it's always searching for which content is the most relative to the people who follow it, as well as what's the most popular. So when you're looking at your feed, right? you know, we'll go back to my home and we're looking at my feed. Well, there's my post, but then here's all the other things people have been posting. Uh, well, I didn't show that, but that's fine. You get what I'm saying. You go to your own feed and you see what other people have been posting. The reason why you see it is one part based on the quality of content, but also the numbers of engagement that happen within the first 30 minutes to an hour. So when you post a post, I suggest that you don't walk away from your post and then abandon it. Meaning, if we jump back over, you go to your post, and in the upper right-hand corner, you can see that kind of recycle button. You tap it, and you'll see people, okay, I got one like so far, okay? Who knows how popular this post is going to be? I hope it really is. But <laughs> that doesn't matter. What matters is that for the first 30 minutes to an hour, you keep an eye on this post. This is your baby. You need to feed it with your attention for 30 minutes to an hour. If people comment on it, it's important for you to respond right away. It's important for you to create engagement one, because your fans are taking their time to engage with your content and you need, to re you need to honor that. They took their time to talk to you. You talk right back to them. This is a conversation. This is why it's called social media. But also what that does, it sends a signal to the algorithm that says, hey, this post is hot. People like it. They want to talk about it. They want to engage it. Okay, so we're going to make it rise in the ranks of other people's feeds, the people that you that follow you, as well as the hashtag popularity game, which is, again, if we look at, say, if we go to Ascended Masters, right, the top nine. So that top nine area, just show you. So again, if your post is really popular and you're showing high amounts of engagement via likes and or comments and you're responding to those comments with depth, then you know, you're know you going to rise up to that top nine of the 30 hashtags you have associated with your post. Okay, so that's a lot we've covered. We've shown or I've talked about how to think about your hashtags again, which is the GPS, aka phone number of how content is discovered. And I've also shown you what I've done to create long format content or microblogging per post, how to add line breaks, and then how to paste that into your post, tag people, influencers, and community members that you want to connect with. And then, uh, you know, adding those 30 hashtags in the first comment as well as the most important part that when you hit send and post the post, that you remain vigilant for the first 30 minutes to an hour and check the engagement and respond to your followers, respond to your audience. This is very, very important. I see a lot of people do things where, you know, I leave a comment and they don't get back to me for three days. No, I don't really care then. You know, I'm like, I want engagement. That's why people are engaging with you. And 
again, as a brand or a business owner, you do have to ask yourself, do I have the time for this? If you're serious, and I'm sure you're all serious, the answer is yes. Now, again, going back to what I was saying earlier, is it in your skill set or is it overwhelming? If it's not, then find a partner who loves to do this, a media company, an agency, or a friend who is down to be your partner in uh, creating conscious media. So I hope that this video has served you well. We've covered quite a few things. Please leave any comments or questions in the section below. And it's been a pleasure. Again, I was super stoked to meet everybody at the Conscious Media Festival. Big, big heart out to everyone who made that happen. And I believe something good is being co-created here and we're doing it together. So I hope this video has served you well. And let me know if there's anything else I can cover for you or any other questions you might have. And I will see you again soon. Much love.